Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Melas Esse, a film director and a colorist. So today, I want to show you how I was able to create this beautiful cinematic look, this beautiful color. If you want to keep getting tips on color grading, you hit the subscribe button and keep getting notifications from me anytime I drop new content. And don't forget to like, comment, and share. Let's roll the intro. Okay, welcome back to my YouTube channel, everyone. Thank you for coming back again. If you know you have not subscribed to my channel, please hit the subscribe button so that you can get notifications of each new video I drop. Thank you very much. And don't forget to like, share, and comment on my videos. So I want to show you a look I was able to create um, without using any lots. I started from the raw footage to till my final process. And I'm going to show you step by step how I was able to do although not step by step really, but just to explain um, the whole node I have here. So I'm going to start with the first, not the first one, not this one, but this one. This was where I did my first balancing, which is my primaries. Yes, I just adjusted it a little. I did a little white balancing. You can see if I come to my primary wheels here, I took my temperature down to the blue um, level I came to my vetroscope and to make sure that my whites are almost are still in the middle so you can see that in my vetroscope here this particular place the whites are sitting in the middle same goes for the black and then in my parade also you can see that they are the colors my red my green and my blue are all sitting on the same level and after this what did I do next in this node I reduced my highlights I came to my HDR tool HDR tool I reduced the light that that is this particular one I took it down to like minus 0.42 just to make sure that the image is not blowing up too much with the highlights and then the next thing I added my saturation which I used my RGB mixer I took my red channel up my green up and my blue I got the saturation yes the saturation looks too much but don't worry we are going to fix that okay so this node I actually did not do anything here and I'm just seeing this node now so I came down here and the first thing I did this particular this is called a layer mixer and this was where I did most of my color separation here the skin the blues the greens the yellow so this first one here is this particular blue that's here this one was what I was able to work on. I made it a little bit bright and then I took down the saturation a little. And then the second one here, I worked on the skin. I came to the qualifier, I selected the skin, then I came to my primary tool, I increased my contrast to like 134, then to my curves, and then in my Saturation my hue versus saturation. I stepped down the saturation to 0.79 Because why we are trying to make the skin look natural. It's not supposed to look fake I didn't really do much on the skin because already my skin was already sitting Close to the skin tone line in the vet in the vetroscope here, which is the skin tone indicator line I only just Made the skin bright a little with like two 0.2 percent of it in the um, gamma um, wheel here so let me show you that the skin is actually sitting in um, the skin tone indicator line so let's close this so you can see here it's actually sitting here so that was what I did I was able to work on the skin and it came out perfectly real smooth and nice then the next thing here the next node up here i worked on this yellow this yellow is here i also used the same qualifier to pick the yellow so i picked my yellows came to my hue versus hue and i took it at my hue um 
my new hue slider and I took it down a little to change the color of the yellow from ideally the yellow the yellow was this color this particular type of yellow but then I took it to this one there's a little change if you if you notice and the next one here is my green this green here I also used a qualifier to pick the green I came here to my gamma I took the green down a little ideally this is what this was how it was looking but then I took it down to this level and it looks look this way then and the last one was the, the whites behind so I came to my qualifier also and then I pushed my luminance to this level to be able to see the part that's actually been affected by the light too much then I came back to my primaries and then I came to my offsets and then I like step the brightness I took the bright brightness down a little so you can see if I reset if I should reset the offset here you notice that it's bright a little so I just took it down just little and made good changes for us then here I created my look now this is my look so what I did here was that so this is actually a new found method that I have been using I don't know how I, I, I was actually actually coloring and then I came up with the concept and it's working fine for me now if I should take this out you can see that our look is actually affecting our skin and I need the skin to look real so what I did was I dragged the skin from its outside layer side and connected it to the look channel the look node and then I came to our key and then I used the meta max to convert to bring back our skin to its normal state and then leave the look behind the skin so from this to this then I reduced the intensity that's the key outputs of our look and it came out looking this way then the next thing I did here was to add my glue from the effects um, Chan um, panel I added the glue and then I adjusted the glue from the shine change hold where is it yes to the spread I, I adjusted everything here that I, I, I had to adjust it to what I like and then I balanced it and the next one here is that I created I reduced the lights coming from this side because I, I wanted it to have this cinematic look so ideally it's showing that the light now is coming from this particular angle not this place then this particular um, correct um, lights correction that I did was using the window tool and then I used this box tool here which is the linear I selected it I made sure I, I, I did the fading out like I, I faded it out very well so it don't look too thick and then I used my um, my curves and I brought it down a little and then the next one here I used a max on her face yes this is the side I used the window tool on her face and then if I play it all through you can see it's been maxed on her face on her face sorry so we could actually still play it again so you can see So this is um, me tracking the face. What I did here is um, using the window tool here on her face. I added, I, I increased the brightness a little and the, con the contrast because her face is like the main um, center of attraction here. So we have to make it look real and for people to be able to see it. Like for every little change you make while color grading, it makes a big difference. So. It makes a big difference so you need to know what you are doing so this I traced it on her face I tracked it all through to her face to make sure that okay yeah, we have a good look her face is popped she's looking okay and she's looking nice and not to forget when I was working on the skin I used um, the mid tones to like smoothen her skin which I'll show you from after the tracking Alright.
right so yes we are done tracking so coming back to the skin here and the primaries i took her uh, um the mid tone details to uh, minus 31 you can actually leave it as at minus 30 or minus 15 it depends on what you want but most for females it is mostly advisable to use minus 30 but i chose to use 31 here and then the next um node i have here i worked in in my curves and here in my sats versus sats just to step down the saturation a little from how it was looking before and the next node i have here should be my um deep band. so this helped me to smoothen the whole image to make it look nice that's this kind of filmy look it gives and then the next one is my pop contrast i like using pop contrast because it helps me make the image come out well and the next node here i just kind of popped the image a little s curve from our curve i took the down the dark side down a little and then the center points i just took it up a little too, and then the, the brighter points too so you can see from our image here we are having th like almost three type of colors mixed together it's more than the three you are seeing here but these are like the primary colors that have been pronounced in the whole footage here and the next node here is in my blur i took the blur to 0 0.47 which is going to make the image sharp to a certain level so let me put it on so you can see yeah so now the, our image is sharp and then the last node here is the film grain so i use the film grain effects from the effects panel just drag it and then i put it on the normal um 33 33 mm on 40 and i worked on it kind of increased the texture the gain strength and then um the okay the opacity i left it in the normal state and then coming back to the first node here is actually our noise reduction it's not every time you have to use the noise reduction but i don't know why i find it very interesting to use it helps me smoothen the whole image maybe probably where i'm having cracks and other thing other things the whole idea of the noise reduction is it helps you reduce noise in your image so yeah i came to the um motion effects here and then i used my my blow my blow if my sorry i used my noise reduction effect i took the frame to like three i left the luma and chroma on four i i selected the chain of, on this special trench hold and this yeah this partial spas, spatial trench hold so I deselected I deselect the chain here and then I worked only on the chroma which is, and I left it on four also the same as this one and then that was how I was able to create this look. Yeah, you can see how beautiful this looks so clean, nice and professional. So yes, from this to this. So Follow my channel for more videos that is going to help you work on your color grading. And don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment my channel.